as we begin this morning, um, it was amazing to me because I, when, when the Lord gave me this lesson for you, uh, I finished it, closed the book, and I was just sitting back spending some time with the Lord early this morning. And uh, he said, read the prophecy. Well, I read it every day, but uh, I began to read the prophecy, and the prophecy is my sermon. Isn't that amazing? You need to get it down inside of you so that when you speak, you're speaking in agreement with this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read the prophecy, just read through it, and then we'll get into the lesson. Uh, but listen to what it says, and I, I hope you're spending some time in this prophecy. Uh, he said, with it, this great outpouring of Holy Ghost power will come spiritual cleansing getting the junk out of your life, such as fear and foolishness. Allow the Holy Spirit to forge a wide path in your life with a cleansing Holy Ghost fire to make way for his anointing to bring forth signs, wonders, and miracles. Your church will flourish. It will abound. It will excel. Who makes up the church? You do. So you will flourish. You will abound. You will excel. God's glory will be seen up and on and in you. And his manifested goodness is the result. You should wake up every day expecting God to do something phenomenal in your life. I said that goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Goodness and mercy shall pursue you. You were created to experience my goodness, not my wrath. My will for your life is blessing and long life. I said in my word in Psalm 21, 3 through 6, for I send blessing of good things to meet you. I set a crown of pure gold on your head. You asked life of me and I gave it to you. Long life forever and evermore. Your glory shall be great because of my help. Splendor and majesty I bestow upon you. For I make you to be blessed and a blessing forever. I make you exceedingly glad with joy of my presence. You must get this deep within your spirit. Rejoice more because you will be experiencing Holy Ghost power breakthroughs. So always stay ready to rejoice. Give thanks to the Lord. The more thanksgiving, the more rejoicing, then the more goodness you will experience. I solemnly declare to you that your eye has not seen nor your ear has even yet heard, nor has it yet entered into the heart of all that I, the Lord, your God, has prepared and has kept ready for you who love me, reverence me, promptly obey me, and gratefully recognize all the benefits that I have bestowed upon you. <clears throat> so far, you have only seen a glimpse of my goodness, but in 2018, oh, in 2018, there will be a great outpouring of my goodness, of my power, of my presence in your midst, like never before seen or experienced. For this is the year of the great outpouring of Holy Ghost power. You will see the manifested goodness, power, and presence of God. You will look back on 2018 and say, that was the year when my heavenly father crowned the year with his goodness through the great outpouring of Holy Ghost power. My cleansing fire I spoke of will clear the path for your life, for the manifestation of my goodness being poured out upon you. Overflow, it's coming. And I will continue the dispensation of accelerated harvest into 2018. The catalyst to unleashing this great outpouring will be praise and worship. Remember that I said the depth of your praise will determine the magnitude of your breakthrough. For I inhabit the praises of my people and, and my manifested glory will know no limits. And it will lift every burden and overwhelmingly destroy every yoke of bondage in your life. This is my cleansing fire of liberty. Oh, there, there's a great outpouring coming in 2018. There's a manifestation of my goodness coming in 2018. There's an outpouring of my power coming in 2018. There's Holy Ghost fire coming in 2018. So jump under the outpouring. Jump in the river of overflow. Bask in my presence. Anticipation will bring manifestation. I said in my word, that you have the mind of Christ. And in 2018, you will have supernatural capacity for spiritual audacity. 
The devil and his crowd will run for cover because he is just no match for the outpouring of my Holy Ghost power. But you will remember and declare that 2018 was your best year yet. Now, that's a powerful, powerful word. And uh, <clears throat> you need to spend time in it. So I've entitled this this morning, The Presence of the Lord. Let's pray as we begin. Father, we come before you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the presence of the Spirit in this place in a special and a powerful and a heavy way this morning. Heavy not uh, in a bad way, but heavy um, um, through the saturation of every bit of the air in this room being filled with your presence. So Lord, I thank you that as this word goes forth, it will go into the hearts renew minds, change lives, change attitudes, change postures and positions of people's thinking toward you in Jesus' name. God's people said, amen. <clears throat> Where the presence of the Lord is, uh, healing is presence to manifest in you. Whether healing is being preached or not, uh, where the presence of the Lord is, uh, deliverance is present to manifest in your life. So you should come in here, every time we come in here, you should come in here expecting it. What you expect, you will receive. Um, peace, where the presence of the Lord is, is present to manifest in your life. Revelation is here to manifest in your life where the presence of the Lord is. Where the presence of the Lord is, understanding is here for you to receive. Where the presence of the Lord is, joy is present to manifest in you. And where the presence of the Lord is, reconciliation is present to manifest in you. In fact, the entire spectrum of what Jesus died on the cross to give us is present and available to us when the presence of the Lord is here and he's here right here right now in this place so you need to reach out and take it when you come in here whatever you have need of just take it recognize and know that the presence of the Lord is always here amen Jesus promised us in Matthew 28 20 that he would never leave us or forsake us. You remember reading that? He said, in the Amplified Translation, he said, I am with you all the days, perpetually, uniformly, and on every occasion. And the word perpetually jumped out at me. And it means constantly, continually, without intermission, and without limitation. God told Joshua in Joshua 1.5, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. And again, the word forsake jumped out at me. It means I won't quit you. I won't depart from you. I won't ever abandon you. I won't renounce you. I won't fail you ever. That's what the Lord is telling you. However, we can usher in his presence. His presence doesn't come in where it's not welcomed. But where it's welcomed, it manifests in its limitless state of power. And we usher in his presence through worship, through praise, uh, through acknowledging his presence, and welcome, just welcome him in our midst, to welcome. I, I sense the presence of the Lord in this place now. Sometimes people think, well, gosh, it's very quiet. No, 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 that's the presence. You remember that old song? Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Sing it. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father, 
of mercy and grace. Thou art well in this place. See, that ushers in the presence of the Lord. I love those old scripture songs that we sang in the early 70s when many of us came into the charismatic renewal. I'd love to, you know, we, we have we have some really good songs now that we sing, but, you know, there's nothing like those old scripture songs. We used to go to Bible studies and just open up Psalms, and one of my Bibles that, that I had there uh, that actually uh, Murray Gold gave me that Bible. He was one of the speakers with PTL back in the day, and he gave me that Bible, and and uh, he was a, a, con- a completed Jew that went around the country at that time. He was old then. And I, I imagine he's with Jesus now, I, unless he's about 140. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> we would just open the Bible, and we had certain psalms marked. And uh, we, we would sing the psalms. In fact, there's one of them. Let me see. I don't have this Bible marked. Uh, but there's one of them. <clears throat> if I can find it. Psalm 5. And uh, of course we sang it in the in the King James Version. But it goes something like this. Uh, Attend to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my meditation. Hear the sound of my cry, my King and my God. For unto you do I pray. In the morning you hear my voice. O Lord, in the morning I prepare a prayer for you and watch and wait for you to speak. Just some of those old songs. Some of you remember those old songs. Now I had trouble singing it because I was singing it in New King James and King James Mixed. We we had the pentameter set for King James. You know, New King James and Amplified. I don't know how in the world that thing would go on Amplified. You'd have to talk a lot faster, I guess. <laughs> but those are the songs that, that I grew up spiritually in. So, Jesus hasn't left us, and miracles haven't left us. I've heard people sadly say, well, you know, miracles have passed away because I don't see any. Have you ever seen anybody get born again? Greatest miracle of all. If you think about it, that is a miracle. I know with me it was. Somebody asked, well, Pastor, how, how is Jesus with us if he's in heaven at the right hand of the Father? I read that in the Bible. Well, Jesus told us in John 14, 16, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another, another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and stand by one just like me that he may remain with you forever. Does everybody understand the definition of forever? Doesn't end, does it? John 16, 14, Jesus said, He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine, he'll declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he, the Holy Spirit, will take of mine and declare it to you. That word clair, declare there simply means announce, make it known, make it plain, clear and visible to the eye, make it understood, make it not obscure. And then John 14, 22, he said, I will manifest myself to you. For those that love me, I'll manifest themselves, myself to you. That simply means it comes from a, a, a Greek uh, root word that means to emphasize. I'll emphasize. I'll give proof of my presence is what the concordance says. I'll give proof of my presence. Hebrews 13, 8 says that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, do you believe that's true? It's in the Bible. 
So Jesus, if you read through the Gospels, was a miracle worker. And if he's the same yesterday and today and forever, he's still a miracle worker. Amen. In several places, as you read through the gospel, the scriptures clearly say, and he healed them all. He healed them all. So all that came to him expecting to receive healing got healed. It didn't matter what it was. Not because they were living right. A lot of them not living right, I'm sure. And I'll tell you this, none of them are born again. But because they were sick and came to him and got in his presence. You remember when Peter, after the resurrection, and Peter and the other disciples went out ministering, and they said when Peter would walk in the streets that people would crowd in just to get in, in, the, in the length of his shadow. Well, it wasn't his shadow that healed him. It was the anointing of God. It was the presence of God around Peter that caused healing to spring forth. And I was thinking about a lot of those things as I was studying and praying and spending some time with the Lord. And then James 5, 14 says, is, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he'll be forgiven. Isn't that wonderful? Come down and be prayed for, for healing. And the Lord, it's not that you came and, and confessed your sin or anything. He, just, he came down for healing. And part of healing is, I forgive you. I forgive you. Don't you remember Jesus ministering to the man that they dropped down through the roof? And he asked, what's the difference? Well, I say, rise up, take your bed and walk or be forgiven. He said, there isn't any difference in it. One comes with the other. Amen. In verse 16, in the Amplified Translation, it says, the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. That sounds a lot like miracle power to me. Why does it work that way? Because of the presence of the Lord and because of God's great love for us. Do you know God loves you? And I believe that miracles are the expression of the love of God. Amen. That even though you've done all you can to mess up, God's going to make a miracle come into your life and clean you up. Amen. Because you and I both know we can't clean us up. Huh? And as I said earlier, the greatest miracle of all is to be born again, to see someone come to Jesus. I have experienced in my years of ministry people who, one particular case I've shared here before, she came into the church one day drunk, possessed with demons, and came running down the aisle and jumped into the air, shouting and screaming with her hands like in claw-like position. And I happened to be ministering right that moment. But my pastor was right next to me. Well, I was young. I didn't know a whole lot about it. And as she jumped in the air, and you could smell the alcohol from the back of the, the building we were in, she said, I'm going to kill you. Well, she didn't even know me. She was going to kill me anyway. I guess the devil had some kind of a glimpse of where I was going. And in the middle of the ark, she jumped off the floor about that far, like a tiger would lunge. And in the middle of that ark, my pastor, God bless him, he said, in the name of Jesus, you stop. And I mean, in the middle of that ark, she just, just fell flat like she had just run into an invisible wall. And we went over, cast the devil out of her, asked her if she wanted to receive Jesus. She said yes. All the smell of alcohol left. She was perfectly in her mind, normal. 
It reminded me of the Gadarene demoniac, you know. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. And I've seen that happen before. I've seen it happen in Africa a number of times. Amen. So Jesus is in the miracle business still. Don't let anybody tell you that he's not. And it's not because we deserve it, for sure. But before you were sent from heaven, now listen to this closely. A lot of people don't know this. Before you were sent from heaven to be born here in the earth, there's a book in heaven outlining your purpose and God's plan for you, even before you were conceived here. Well, that just blows in the head abortion, the little argument for abortion. When is it a baby? When it was in heaven before it came to earth? What? I don't believe in the heaven. Well, you've got a big problem. <clears throat> Psalm 139, 16, because I heard somebody say, give me a Bible. Okay. Psalm 139, 16, for instance, there's different places that's in there, but here is one that's common. And in your book, all the days of my life were written before ever they took shape. Not before my body took shape, before my days took shape. When as yet there was none of them. Message translation says there, the days of my life all prepared before I'd even lived one day. God's got a book. He's got a purpose for your life. You don't have to go through that purpose, but if you want God's best and, and, and what he has planned for you in life, which is uh, blessing and, and prosperity in spirit, soul, and body, then you need to find out what your purpose is. You see, God has a plan. He's got a purpose for your life for you to fulfill. Every person here is not here by coincidence. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, which is, means nothing missing, lacking, nothing broken and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Well, that word means expectation. The Amplified says, to give you a future and a hope in your final outcome. So God has a path of success for your life. Did you know that? The Bible says it does. Jeremiah 29, 12 goes on to say, then you will call upon me and go pray to me, and I'll listen to you. And you will seek me and find me. Where? On that path. And, and, and when you search for me with all your heart. Verse 14 goes on to say, I will be found by you, says the Lord. And, and, will, and, <clears throat> and I will bring you back from your captivity. See, many people get off the path. And they start deciding, you know, this sounds good. This pays more. This is that and this is that. So that's what I'm going to do. Did you pray? Or was it just perhaps the money or the prestige? Or maybe the job miraculously, in quotes, came open in Hawaii. And you get over there and you find out that Hawaii isn't, as, it isn't all it's knocked up to be. And if you like to go on long trips in your car, forget Hawaii. About the longest you're going to get is about 40 miles. <laughs> then you have to go in a circle. It's pretty, but it gets redundant. <laughs> Did you ask the Lord? Because on that path that the Lord has for you is where he'll hear your voice, he'll answer you, and he'll direct you, and he'll, and the, the, maximum yield blessing for your life is already in place for you. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians that he prepared everything that you need in your life to succeed and get to your final destination before time was. And I began to do a little study of that and it led me into this Psalm 139. Well, before that, well, when was that? When he wrote about you in the book, in heaven. 
Amen. Go share that with some of your abortionists. Maybe that'll speak to their heart. <clears throat> so what is an expected end? What is a final outcome? As the Bible says in the Amplified or the New King James says, what is a future and a hope? Well, God wrote about it before you were even conceived in the womb. He tells you about it. And you may have gotten off the path. A lot of people do. I did. But God is present to get you back on course. Amen. I said God's present to get you back on course. Amen. See, God wants your life just like things are in heaven. Did you know that? How are things in heaven? Pretty good, aren't they? You remember what Jesus taught his disciples when he was teaching them how to pray and, and declare? In Matthew 6, 9, he said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. What? On earth as it is in heaven. He wants your life here blessed just like he planned it in heaven. And he planned a good life for you. The Bible says that we can live the good life. It's been prearranged for us. Well, how is it in heaven? Is anybody sick up there? Is anybody poor up there? Well, I don't think so. I mean, the driveway up to your house is made of gold and the street out in front, the sidewalk, everything else. So you, I, I think people up there are probably doing all right. Is anybody sad in heaven? How about diseased? Well, see, that's what God wants down here. And he's made it available to us. And his presence ushered in creates that atmosphere for miraculous power to operate, for outpouring of Holy Ghost power. See, Jesus' entire ministry was based on this mindset. Do you realize that? Wherever he went, he wanted it to be like heaven on earth. And he, tried, he showed people. There are a lot of people that were living in horrible situations of sickness and disease and Immediately he would heal them. You remember the leper that he not only healed, you know, the 10 came to him and one stayed, the others ran off. And he said, he stayed and glorified Jesus and Jesus not only healed him, but made him whole. That meant nose came back, lips came back, ears came back, fingers came back. If he had lost a limb, it came back. That's whole, that's a miracle. Well, he's still doing miracles. The body of Christ has got to get to a position once again where they believe that. See, there's too many out there because of various reasons that I don't have time to get into now. They don't believe that anymore, so they don't teach it anymore. Because they think that they're responsible if they teach it. If it doesn't happen, they're responsible uh, and held responsible for lying. Well, the Bible's not a lie. Amen. But you've got to believe it. See, when you believe it, it ushers in the presence of the Lord. So if people were sick, wherever Jesus went, he got them healed. If they were oppressed by devils, they were delivered. If they were poor and in need of sustenance, he blessed them. Because Luke 10, 38 gives us a hint of that. It said, Jesus, anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, went about Doing good, if you study the root of that, it's where we get our English word philanthropist. What does a philanthropist do? So see, Jesus wasn't poor. People says he was. He wasn't poor. Very wealthy. That poverty that they talk about over there was bringing himself down from heaven to the earth. He was blessed as a child with millions and millions for his earthly ministry. Said he went about doing good and healing those who were oppressed of the devil. And all this is available in the presence of the Lord. That's why Peter told them in Acts 3.19. He said, so repent. Change your mind and purpose. Remember seeing that? It's in the Amplified Translation. 
turn around and return to God. Now see, repent, he was talking to people that had not gotten born again, but repent for the Christian means, if you know, a penthouse is on top of a building, isn't it? Isn't that what they call a penthouse? Re, the prefix, means to turn around. So when we repent, the Lord's saying, turn around from the way you're living, speaking, and thinking. Turn around and come back up to where I said you are. That's how you repent before the Lord. Lord, I'm sorry I was thinking, speaking, and doing things that did not agree with what you said in the word that I can do and the way I can live. So I turn around from that right now in the name of Jesus. Now, I know my sin's already been forgiven on the cross. So I turn around from that action that's already been taken care of and I stop that. I turn around and come back up here and act like you told me to act. Amen? He said, repent, change your mind and purpose, turn around and return to God that your sins may be erased, blotted out, wiped clean. Well, Jesus went to the cross and that happened. That times of refreshing, of recovering from the effects of heat. You know, when you're in the midst of trouble, it's a heated situation, isn't it? From recovery, from the effects of heat, of reviving with fresh air that may come from the presence of the Lord. Wow, that's powerful. And then in verse 20, very few people read that with it, but it says, and that he may send to you the Christ who before, before when? Not only, one translation says, but not just preach to you, but before, before when? Before time was, before you got here. All the way back up when it was being written in the book what he had for you. He said that he may send to you the Christ who before was designated and appointed for you, even Jesus. So Jesus was designated for you. He was appointed for you before your being ever left heaven and before you were ever born. See, everything that will ever come at you Jesus already took it upon himself on the cross. Among other places, it tells us that in Isaiah 53, verses 3, 4, and 5. It tells us that. Now, you may have been hit with something, but the presence of the Lord is here <laughs> to clear the records. Erase all that's been launched against you. And you may have caused it. That's not even in the mix. He's here to free you of it. And that in your time of weakness, whenever that was, you let it stick to you, but yet he'll totally liberate you. That's miracle working power. And as we alluded to earlier, 2 Corinthians 3.16 says, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Whatever is standing in your way of moving forward for his purpose in your life, it's taken away when you, when you turn to the Lord. What is standing between you and victory? And then in verse 17, it goes on to say, and this is the verse that you're familiar with, now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where he is given freedom to arise and awaken and stir you and agitate you into worship and praise and shake you into deliverance and liberty. He said that liberty is there in abundance. Now the Spirit of the Lord is here. You sang about it earlier. The presence of the Lord is here. 1 Peter 2.24 tells us who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness. See, it's a choice that you make by whose stripes 
you were healed. Have you ever looked that word healed up there in that verse? It means cured. It means healed for sure. It means made whole. It also means to free from errors and sins. Isn't that interesting? It just agrees with what we had already read. Jesus would heal them and they'd be forgiven. The elders would anoint them, pray the prayer of faith, and they would be healed and they would be forgiven. Amen. So, whatever you feel condemned of, as I've heard Rick Renner say before, get over it. I think he's got a book out there that says, get over it. Be ready to change when you read his book because <laughs> it jerks the slack out of you. There are people that they stay under condemnation and the condemnation will lead you into melancholy. Every, do you, anybody ever known any melancholy Christians? It's almost like it's a badge of honor to be condemned all the time. Oh, I could never amount to anything. I did this and I did that. And it just, it's over for me. I asked somebody one time, I said, when did that, when did you do that? Oh, let's see, it was 1962, I believe. 1962. I said, this is 2014. And you've been carrying that around for all those years? Yeah, it's over. I said, well, did you get born again? Yes. I said, that's when it should have left. There are a lot of Christians that are still carrying around the weight of sin that Jesus forgave you of and that was completely abolished out of your life, erased out of the book. You remember the book? You know the book of life that they talk about in heaven? Same book that he wrote your future and your purpose in. Same, very same book. There is a book there. And when you came to Jesus, that every ordinance against you, it tells us that in the Bible, was wiped out, page cleared, ready for new stuff to be written in there. You are the prophet of your own life how you want your life to go as you speak this word that you believe in your heart, it can go in that very direction and you'll get on that path for God's purpose for your life. It's not complicated. Amen. Well, pastor, I, you know, I know maybe he's got this big purpose for me, but all I like to do is sell shoes. You miss the whole point. Sell shoes for the glory of God. If that's what you love to do, guess what? That's your purpose. See, not everybody is supposed to be an elder in a church. Not everybody's supposed to be a pastor. Not everybody is supposed to be an evangelist. Not everybody's going to operate in the fivefold ministry. But God has a purpose for you individually for just you. I could go to a book, a, a, a shoe store right now. I couldn't sell a shoe. I probably couldn't give a shoe away. You know why? Because, number one, I'm not interested in it. And the reason I'm not interested in it is I don't have anything in me that enables me and equips me to do such a thing. I remember when I was with the insurance companies. I was doing very well settling lawsuits and as a, a negotiator of lawsuits for the state of South Carolina and enjoyed doing it. I mean, I was overworked. It was overwhelming but I enjoyed doing it. And they kept trying to see me, get me into sales because I could sell a settlement on a lawsuit. Well, that's what they called it. I, I called it something else. Different kind of sales, believe me. And so they kept trying to pull me into sales, pull me into sales, pull me into sales. And every time I'd go home and think about going into sales, I went, oh, oh. I mean, it just, ugh. I couldn't stand the thought of having to do that. You know why? It wasn't my purpose. What I was doing was my purpose. And one of the things that it was, was it was a preparation of what I'm doing right now. How to do certain things, how to, how to deal with people. Also, I was an investigator, uh, worked with a lot of the uh, agencies in the government and, and in the state of South Carolina and local police agencies and sheriff departments, revealing and exposing 
um, fraud rings, theft rings, and all kinds of stuff like that. And uh, I was very good at it because the Lord blessed me to be in that area. But you know that I was not blessed to be a fraud investigator. I was blessed in being honed for discerning of spirits. So when somebody would say, I had to interrogate people and take statements from people and ask certain questions that actually the Holy Ghost would give me. Because, see, if, if somebody is lying, you ask them enough questions about that from three or four or five different directions after a while. See, a liar can't remember what he said. So he'll tell another story after a while. It'll cross grain it. And if you're telling the truth, the truth is the truth, isn't it? Isn't the truth, the truth, all the time the truth, the truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. The truth is the truth, is the truth, is the truth, is the truth. But a lie is here, there, yon, this, and, and when you have, when you tell a lie, you gotta think up something to make that lie look valid. And then, now you gotta take up something else to make that lie that made that lie valid. And after a while, you're not smart enough to keep that up. You get somebody that's anointed to expose you and you're gonna lose, boy. And I was good at what I did, cause I kept, before I go into an interrogation, I say, Holy Ghost, Luke 12, 2 and 3, expose this thing and <laughs> bring it out in the open. And he would. Amen. So what you're doing right now could be your purpose. A lot of times people get filled with the Holy Ghost and they begin to study faith and they immediately think, well, wow, you know, I've learned all this stuff. I'm supposed to go into the ministry. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. Who's going to witness to, the, to your circle of life if you're not there? Assuming that circle of life is where God has placed you. See, we're all placed in different places. See, I couldn't do what I'm doing without you. And many of you couldn't do what you're doing if you didn't know some of the things that the Lord's had me share with you. We need each other. Amen. We're one body and we need one another. My door's always open for revelation, man. If you, if you know something, I, I want to know what you know. I'm always open to learn new things. So I, 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 above all things, know that I don't know it all. The more I know, the, the more I know that I don't know. Amen. But I'm willing and open to learn. So, if fear or oppression or depression or melancholy or sickness, or condemnation is something that you haven't been able to shake and still kind of trails behind you in any form, in any amount. Could be just a titch. You understand what a titch is? I don't know, but I've heard the word. A little bit. You don't need any of it. It's holding you back. And so what the Lord has instructed me to do is to have you stand and uh, I'd like for the elders of the church that are already set apart elders that I have laid my hands on and set you apart as an elder, I'd like for you to come down here. According to James 5, we have anointing oil here. We're going to anoint you with oil and pray the prayer of faith and the Lord will save you sin or if you're under any condemnation or any kind of thing that's holding you back the Lord will set you free and liberate you prayer of faith and the presence of the Lord will liberate you and set you free amen, amen. Yes. hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. see the devil has no power but what we give to him. You don't give him any, you don't have any. And the more you find out what the written word of God says, the more you will recognize very clearly the voice of the devil. And ignore it or rebuke it. Amen. It's really not that complicated a thing to do. You just have to decide, that's what I'm going to do. Live that life. Walk that path. Fulfill God's purpose in your life. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you receive that this morning? Yes, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, lift your hands to the Lord and say this with me. Father, I thank you, Father, I thank you that, my that my purpose 
and my path that's been preordained. You will show me. I will fulfill it and receive the fullness of the good life that Jesus has for me. And it's in his glorious name that I say this. Amen. Now give the Lord one more shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, take someone's hand and receive the blessing. Father, I thank you and I speak blessing over everyone within the hearing of my voice that this week will be the best and most phenomenal week of their life that they've ever experienced. Surround them and keep them and bless them in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen.